In this next video, I want to show the idea of 3D printing. Uh, taking our designs from Tinkercad and sending them to a 3D printer. And I want to lay up some of the concepts and ideas of 3D printing. And I've got a virtual 3D printer I found online and I'm going to share that as well. Just to give you a context of where you're going. Um, simple idea. In, Tinkercad, I made a simple design, nothing really fancy, but basically just a box on the bottom as a base with some words on top. Um, remember that this blue space around represents the work table or the platen or whatever you want to call it for the 3D printer at our school or any other 3D printer really, but this is the one we have in the school that we would like to use. And so this blue rectangle is the space where it can print. As some background, um, I think I said this in class, I don't remember, but I want you to think of a 3D printer like a glue gun. We've probably all used one of these. You put the material in here, in this case it's glue, you plug it in, and in here the heater makes it really hot. And then when you pull the trigger, it pushes under pressure and out the nozzle comes the melted plastic, or sorry, the melted glue, and you can glue what you want. That idea of melting glue gun-ish stuff is what I want you to think about for a 3D printer. But in a 3D printer, it's not really, well, it's not really, it's not glue that you're squirting out. You're virtually squirting out plastic. And the heater heats up the plastic that sits there in a big roll somewhere. And when you turn the 3D printer on, the computer is basically squirting excuse me, squirting out plastic in some kind of an X, Y, Z pattern. So I'm trying to see, I don't know if this is going to work, but you can see the plastics coming out and the printer is zinging around in X, Y, and Z. And it's slowly layering up. This They kind of jumped in the video, but you can see that little by little, more layers, they just keep squirting out liquid plastic. And the plastic uh, cools off and hardens and it just keeps growing and growing. So these layers are called in uh, sort of 3D jargon, they call them slices. You have a slice, another slice, another slice, another layer, 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 layer. It just keeps slicing as it builds up. And as you go along, the printer just keeps adding material. For you manufacturing types, that's why they call it additive manufacturing because you're slowly adding material as you go and you build up by uh, those kinds of slices as it goes. I could jump to the end here, I guess, and you can see as it's finishing off. One of the reasons 3D prints take so long is because you can only sort of squirt or extrude out very thin slices or layers of plastic as you go. Because if you go too fast or too uh, quickly, then you're going to get um, smudging or it's going to get too hot and it sort of droops and stuff like that. Okay. So going back to my little uh, design in Tinkercad, I want to take this and send it to a 3D printer. In Tinkercad, like a lot of different softwares, I'm going to export the file. There are different ways to do this, but the most common one that I'm familiar with is exporting it as an STL file. Um, that's the extension type, and I looked it up. Uh, STL files, stereolithography, as you call it. Um, it's really just a three-dimensional file. And I looked up some of those ideas, and they came, uh, for you math people, you get all excited. We used in VCARB the idea that we're really just following vectors. And the idea of a vector design or a vector file is quite common in uh, design, uh, desktop publishing, 3D printing, those kinds of things. And for the math people, you get all excited, but in I think in advanced functions, you start learning about three-dimensional vector coordinate systems, X, Y, Z. And an STL file is basically a three-dimensional vector file, I guess. So when we're in Tinkercad, we take our design 
and basically exported it as, as an STL file. I've already done that, but um, it basically takes your design and takes all of the coordinates and all of the different XY locations and chops it up into one big, big honking STL file. Now, what do you do with an STL file? Well, I found this software that kind of mimics um, a 3D printer. So it's made by, this software is made by Ultimaker. They're a 3D printer company. And I think their software is called Cura. I'm not sure I really uh, found the best software, but this one works. And this is like a virtual 3D printer. The idea is, if you've ever used a 3D printer, you go in, find your file. And I made some STL files practicing and playing around, but I've already loaded my STL file. This is supposed to uh, replicate or simulate what the uh, 3D printer looks like. That's the size that you can print. Um, you can pick different types, but that's the MakerBot again that we used in the school. If you've ever used a 3D printer, you can bring in your STL file and you can zoom it up, uh, rotate it, flip it around. There's just familiar tools there. In this simulator, you can also pick what material you want to do. I picked a generic one here. Don't ask me. I don't know what all these are. There's so many different kinds of materials out there available, but I chose ABS because that's a type of plastic that we use in the school. You've seen many times in the classroom, maybe. Uh, it's a very common plastic. If you crawl underneath your sink or your uh, basement in your house, typically, or most houses, you'll see that black drain pipe everywhere for the sewage and stuff. And that's ABS plastic. It's a common, cheap, stable plastic, so it's quite easy and cheap to use. <coughs> Pardon me. But there are other ways you can you can print too, but I, I'm just sticking with that. There's also a setup here where you can um, set the resolution, of how fine you want to print, so how close you want to slice things. And there's another, I, I set it very low. If you set it very high, you get a very fine slicing, very fine layering, but the time to print goes really high. So you get very close uh, profiles. Oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Fine. <laughs> you know it the other way. You get up here, sorry, click, come on. Um, it goes extra fast. So typically somewhere in the middle we're doing an online simulation oh, it's just not clear it's i'll go for draft quality infill uh, i'll explain that later but it's a percentage usually especially online or stuff i would go very low infill and i'll show you that in a second what that means but basically it's filling up solid paces and you don't want to waste too much plastic, so you keep that down low. If you need strength or something, you tend to go up higher, I guess, but I'll keep it very low. Um, so I've set those settings, and, and I'm preparing my model, and then I'm going to go slice. And what it's really doing as it's processing is it's creating a whole bunch of slices um, to or layers to build up the virtual model 3D print. With my settings, I have 35 minutes. If I go up and change the draft settings or that, it may take longer. And I think the first times I did it, I had like seven hours or something. Like, Whoa, I'm not going to wait all day for that. You can click preview here uh, or here. It doesn't really matter. But it jumps into this 3D printing simulation mode. So you can kind of see what's going on. I need to move this out of the way here. So you get this play thing going on. Down here, there's this slider. Right now, when it's sliced, it made 142 slices. Now watch what happens. If I bring it back down to the beginning slices, what it's trying to show is how the 3D printer will print. And there's that infill, oops, there's that infill thing going on. You see how it's made that web? So this is just empty space, hollow space. It's a way of filling up block shapes without wasting too much plastic. 
So if you make the infill much higher percentage, these little empty pockets get smaller and you get more webbing or more support in your site. But then your cut time goes way up. So you got to kind of compromise and decide, well, how much infill do I really need for what I'm doing? Now, this simulation, I'm going to put it somewhere about here. Let me just line this up a bit, zoom out a bit. And when you press play, you watch, and it's showing in yellow how the printer would actually extrude out the filament or the plastic and print it as it goes. Watch the progress bar here. When it gets to the end at layer, sorry, slice 35 or layer 35, it's going to jump. Now it's layer 36. And then it'll do the whole thing again, slicing, uh, sorry, layering up that slice or that layer. And as it gets to the end of that layer, it will jump to 37. Remember, it was 140 something layers. Well, that's why it takes 35 minutes because it has to go through and do all of those layering. Another thing you might notice, some of you are like geeky mechanical types. Why does the printer jump all over the place when it's printing? It doesn't want to print hot plastic in the same location. It needs to move around. Once it prints here, it's cooling. It's expecting that plastic to cool down. So it goes over somewhere else and prints. So when it comes back over to that location, it assumes or hopes or plans or that's the algorithm that that plastic has already cooled off and it's ready for the next layer or the next slice. So you want to make sure, um, I shouldn't say we want to make sure, the software engineers when they design the software want to make sure that they spread around the glue gun in a sense so that the plastic has its chance to cool off. Okay, and that's part of the software logic. Well. So there you have it. That's how a 3D printer prints. And this is a virtual printing simulation. It's not the greatest example, but I hope that helps you get a, an idea of how 3D printing works and where it comes from. That's it.